Hello, uh, today I'm going to talk about a subject that a lot of people are maybe afraid of or don't like to talk about, and that is mortality. Um, it's something I've been thinking about uh, maybe for the last, well, for my whole life, obviously, but specifically in the last maybe four or five years. Um, and I think this is inspired by two events. Um, the first one uh, was I was living in Vietnam. This is a few years ago. Um, and in Vietnam, if you've ever been there, you know that the traffic is quite intense. Um, it's predominantly uh, motorbikes and scooters, motorcycles, very few cars. Um, and very big trucks uh, but the people tend to just drive with whichever way they want um, nobody really follows the traffic laws and it's kind of chaos uh, I've been to a lot of countries and most of the countries that I've been to have much more structure than Vietnam so it's quite dangerous to ride a bike there motorbike and uh, I wouldn't say it's 100% necessary, but um, if you don't have a lot of money, that's the way you get around. Uh, so I had a motorbike, and one night I was coming home uh, from dinner, and I got hit by somebody. Um, they kind of were behind another bike on a side street, and they zipped around the other bike but because they were behind it they didn't see me and I was going you know not super fast but fast enough that when they hit me uh, I flew over the handlebars of the motorbike and I hit the ground pretty hard <laughs> uh, and you know it messed up my shoulder quite a bit I don't think I broke it um, I didn't really go to the hospital for it, but I, I definitely was in pain uh, for several weeks. I think, um, you know, at the time I didn't really have insurance in Vietnam, so I wasn't really sure how much it was going to cost me. And I knew it wasn't broken, but um, it needed to heal, let's just say that. But that event really got me thinking, uh, also because maybe every two or three days in Vietnam I'd see something on Facebook or some other social media site about a foreigner being hit by a truck or you know a lot of very ghastly motor accidents um, so it really got me to thinking that I was lucky um, you know lucky that nobody ran me over when I hit the ground um, so, you know, while I was laid up, I was laid up for a few weeks, and I kept thinking about that incident. And it got me to thinking um, about how uh, dangerous life is, I guess. I mean, I've always thought that, but I think when I was younger, you know, you have this invincible attitude. Um, and... Part of that comes from your inexperience, uh, but part of it might also be the way you think at that age. That was the first experience. The second experience has been the last few years uh, with what's been going on. And, you know, I don't think I was as afraid as a lot of people were, but um, there was a lot of soul searching in these last couple years about how much longer I have and you know my grandfather lived into his 90s so I probably have a lot longer to go I hope <laughs> I'm not sure uh, but you know you never know uh, however I know it can all be taken away tomorrow or even today so you know that's something that you have to keep in mind and I don't want to say that 
I fear it more now than I used to, but I guess I know my days are numbered and I want to sort of set the record straight uh, with, with certain people if I can and try to figure out what exactly I'm leaving behind. Um, so, you know, it got me to thinking a lot about this icon of the Grim Reaper, um, which is also represented in the god Kronos, I guess. And two images kind of popped into my head. Uh, one being the uh, Ingmar Bergman film, The Seventh Seal. I think that has a very good representation of death in that movie. And it's sort of chasing him, the main character. Uh, and the main character is playing chess and there's this plague in the background and so you kind of think you know is he gonna live is he gonna not live but he's try he's trying to be crafty against a force uh, a, a god I guess that you can't really outsmart so it's an interesting movie and a lot of interesting iconography in it the other one would be uh, a book and movie, uh, Christmas Carol, Dickens. Um, again, the Grim Reaper is in that, sort of the ghost of Christmas future, but it's basically the Grim Reaper. Uh, and in there, you know, um, Scrooge is reflecting on his life and what he is leaving behind. In one of my other videos on anamnesis, I talk a lot about this recovery of forgotten knowledge. And I think our souls may, our souls are eternal, but our bodies may reincarnate um, over time, and we sort of, um, there's the same cycle going on over and over again. And this is portrayed a lot in um, a lot of religious art and mystical art. Um, one image in particular that comes to mind is William Blake's image of Jacob's Ladder. And whenever I think of Jacob, Jacob's Ladder, I think of this spiral staircase. Um, and in my first novel, I talk a lot about spiral, I call it spiral mountain, but you could basically say staircase. And, you know, I think it's uh, represented a lot in like ziggurats or pyramids as well. Um, and the idea, I think, is that through adaptation, we go higher and higher. Um, and this is my own idea, but I've also found analogs of it in Rastacrucian uh, mysticism. And they talk a lot about how um, different creatures have different levels of awareness um, the lowest being like well the lowest being rocks which aren't creatures but moving up in the scale you have like the reptiles and then the mammals and people and then higher beings angels and gods I guess but um, I like that idea that we're moving towards something um, and it, I don't like the idea of the uh, the Christian heaven. I think that it is some kind. It shows some kind of finality, uh, and like there's a goal. And I feel like nature is more of a process than a goal. Um, there are so many dualities in nature that you know. I feel like as we're going around, we're completing a process and we're moving up. And maybe that would go on through eternity, I guess. Um, so I like to think of my soul as being eternal. Um, and, you know, sometimes I talk about the soul being like the tree or the roots and then like the leaves being your bodies. So the leaves fall off every season, but then they come back. So our lives are like a season, I guess. Um, and then there's this idea in that in anamnesis where you're sort of redoing events and 
I think that we feel this a lot. Um, we always kind of know when we're on the right track or when we're lost. And how do we really know that without some kind of plan in place? Um, and I like the idea of us failing at something and getting, getting like a second chance at some point to make things right. And, you know, you can also look at it as sort of moving up in grade, like, you know, I'm a teacher and in, you know, you have like elementary school and middle school, high school and so on. Um, you kind of have to move up in a grade as you progress uh, with the knowledge that you get from that grade, you build on it to the next grade. And I like that idea uh, in our finite lives, sort of building towards something in our infinite life, if that makes sense. Do I fear death? The answer to that question is yes and no. Um, on one hand, I trust the plan. It's taken me a long time to figure that out. Um, and maybe there's still a little bit of doubt. And then there'll probably always be. But I trust it more now than I ever have. Um, a lot of times in life things happen and you just don't understand why. And at this point, I'm starting to realize that whatever the plan is, that's what I'm uh, doing and that's what I signed up for. So I have to follow it through and many things will resolve themselves along the way, I'm sure. As far as the other side of it, uh, I'm not afraid to not exist anymore. I think, you know, if you live in the present, you know that everything is moving. So uh, if I die, then I just move on to something else. But I think what I do fear a little bit is the um, sorrow others might feel with me gone, the way that I felt sorrow for others that have gone that I've loved um, you know I've lost some friends along the way and loved ones uh, not just in death but in just other ways um, and you know I think about them a lot and they come up a lot and you know there's a lot of pain there I think we all have that um, but you know, if I'm gone, I, I wonder, this might be presumptuous of myself, but I wonder how people will um, remember me. I'm sure some people will remember me fondly and others will not. It depends a lot on uh, what I've done to the people, whether um, our relationships have been positive or negative, I guess. Although most relationships have both, I would say. So, you know, it depends a lot on the person and how they f feel towards me, I guess. Um, but with that said, uh, you know, one thing I've thought about for years is you know, I'm an artistic person and I write a lot and I make a lot of art and at some point, I think this happened when I was in school, I wondered why am I doing this? Um, there was something in me that was driving me to do it and I could never really answer that question. Along the way, I have thought, well, maybe it's some kind of legacy, but a lot of the things, you know, they were uh, me sort of trying to get my psychology out so I could understand it. So I don't know if it's, something that is necessarily a legacy. Um, I would think of it more as like some kind of therapy or something. Um, or a way of understanding myself better. But I have no children. And so, you know, my writing and my art are a lot like my children, I guess. I put a lot of effort into them and I've put my heart and soul into everything I've made, really. So 
if that lives on, I would be happy with that. Uh, you know, you never really know how things like that will hap will progress. I mean, there are many artists that we probably never heard of that just died and we never saw anything that they ever made. Then there are other ones where we found their art after they've died and they've been remembered. Uh, but you, you never know. Um, some things resonate with people and some things don't. So, you know, I would like to think that something of myself will uh, go on further into eternity. Uh, but that's something that the Stoics talk about a lot is that, you know, even if you leave a very, very strong impact, that echo will only last so long. So, you know, it could be a, a hundred years, it could be a thousand years, but eventually it will fade. So in that case, yeah, <laughs> I don't know, but um, I think, you know, death is a mystery, just like love and magic and many other things that we experience in this realm. So I guess I'm ready for it. Anyway, uh, I think that's all I got. And maybe if you want to think a little more about that, if you have anything to say about it, you can leave it in the comments. Take care. Bye.